The heart of your teams. The heart of Michigan. Valley Sports Detroit. The heart of the fan. It's a beautiful post-Thanksgiving Friday in downtown Detroit. One team has made a two-day journey to get here, trying to celebrate their first ever state championship win 20 years ago with another one today. The other just a two-hour jaunt from West Michigan, and they're returning to a building where they've known more than just a little bit of success. High School Football on Valley Sports Detroit is presented by the Southeast Michigan Ford Dealers. It's the Division VI state championship game between the Miners of Nagani and the Falcons of Grand Rapids West Catholic. Welcome inside Ford Field, everyone, along with John Wangler. I'm Dan Dickerson. We're excited for this matchup today. John, a West Catholic team that has a tradition of winning that goes back a long way and a lot of state titles to their credit. This is an explosive team we're really looking forward to watching two players in particular today. Timmy Kloska in the backfield. What a year he's had. And Bernie Barnes deal at quarterback. Well, it all starts with Timmy Kloski, number 22, six foot, 220 pounds. Can go inside and outside very fast. He's run for over 2,100 yards. He's really the engine that makes that offense go. Unbelievable weekend last weekend for Kloska. 16 carries over 300 yards and five touchdowns. That is the man to stop. And like you say, he can run inside and outside. And here's the guy who directs this offense. Well, Bernie Barnes deal number two. He's a senior leader. As you can see, he can move, but he's also can throw it. he spreads the ball around. He's thrown for over 1,400 yards. He doesn't make mistakes with the ball, doesn't throw interceptions. He's really the leader of that offense and the one that makes it click. You want to stack the line and stop Klaska? You've got to deal with Barnes deal, and he's been very efficient and prolific, really, this season when he needs to be. So the task of stopping those two guys in this powerful Falcon offense falls to a Nagani defense. And, and John, they look like they're up to the task. At one point this year, they had four consecutive shutouts. They're led by a couple of linebackers, Eli Van Buren and Nico Lukarainen, who've been making this defense what it is. Well, they really have. And Paul Jacobson, their coach, preaches defense. It all starts with defense. And, and you got Nico Lukarainen, a two-way starter, captain, senior. Eli Van Buren, another senior two-way starter. These two guys make all the plays. They're very smart. They adjust on the run. You don't have to tell them twice. And here he comes, Nico Luca Ryan, you can see on the, uh, on the film. Another star. Him and Van Buren really lead that defense and make it click. That's so smarts the head coach, Paul Jacobson, has talked about how good they are, and it's led the defense. So now, as you mentioned, a lot of two-way starters. Luca Reinen is one of the big backs in the backfield. This is a running offense. Kyla Carr, who you see on your screen, what a year he has had. He really has, and it hasn't really started for him, you know, until the sixth game. That's when he started getting a lot of touches. He's run for over 1,200 yards, very, very fast. He can get outside. So they got a two-way go with Luca Reinen and Lacar offensively. This is a heck of a matchup. Team from the UP that hasn't played the schedule that West Catholic has. But West Catholic knows that they've got it. They got their hands full with this Nagani defense here today. A lot of good memories for Grand Rapids West Catholic. Five consecutive state championships not that long ago. They're back in the finals for the first time since 2017. Nagani celebrating 20th anniversary of their state championship 20 years ago. We're excited for this matchup. Kickoff from Ford Field is coming up next. Be the best version of yourselves, trust in the guy next to you, and then what is the strongest emotion one person can have for another? Love. Love each other for four more quarters. This is it, no matter what happens, this is it. And it's a celebration of the amount of work you put in, 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 the sacrifice that we've talked about. Waking up in the morning when it's stuck in the winter. Get into the weight room before 6.30 a.m. Not being sure if it would be worth it at the time, right? We can all be honest, we're a little bit, man, is this worth it? Is this really going to get us to where we want to be? And you guys believed in it the whole time. And look, hey, we are right where we knew we would be. I never, hey, the first time I met you guys, 
And the first time we worked out, I knew we would be here. I knew it. If you guys trusted the process and trusted in your coaching and trusted in each other and loved each other, I knew we would be right here. Well, that doesn't get you fired up. <laughs> Landon Grove, head coach in his first year. He's just five years removed from playing college football at Ferris State. 27 years old and a heck of a first year. And that's what he talked about a lot, John Wangler, believing in that process after their one loss this year. Are we going to stick with this? The kids believed in it, and that's why they're here today. Well, it's all about trust, man. And, and he, he preaches that, and these kids believed in it, and this is where it's gotten them today. Nolan Reinhardt, Eugene Atkins deep as Grand Rapids West Catholic will go on offense first. Good hit at the 28 yard line. Eugene Atkins on the return for Grand Rapids West Catholic. David Carlson on the hit, taking him out of bounds. So Nagoni won the toss. They elect to defer. Grand Rapids West Catholic, a team that's averaged almost 40 points a game, and they've been rolling up the points certainly in the playoffs. We'll go on offense first. We look at the head coach of Nagani, Paul Jacobson, in his 23rd year. He was the head coach for the one championship team that Nagani had 20 years ago. They celebrated the 20th anniversary big ceremony in September this year, and now they are trying to complete that 20th anniversary celebration with a win here today. Back to throw, Barnes deal, has a man wide open at the 50. Carter Perry down the sidelines, they will not catch him. How about that? Let's go! 72 yards, Barnes deal to Carter Perry for the touchdown. What a way to start the game. Great call to open a game. Here it is, just a little fake to Klaska. He steps back. He runs a go route down the sideline. He just ran right by the corner for 72 yards. He laid it right in there. They were not suspecting that. They were looking him to give the ball to Klaska. Totally fooled the defense. Wow. Carson Beekman, the kicker, on for the extra point for Grand Rapids West Catholic. You won't see a start like that very often. The extra point is up and good. Beekman's been very good. Extra points this year. Sixteen seconds in. Perfect throw from Barnes deal. Yeah, he really let it. He didn't have to stop at all. Laid it out to let him run. Did a nice job. Perry took him inside, and then he worked to the outside. They put the ball on the outside shoulder, and then it was just a foot race to the end zone. That's the thing that we were talking about. I mean, you've got a back in the backfield, John, who's gained almost 2,200 yards on the ground this year. Of course, you're going to try to stop that guy. Who in the building didn't think they would <laughs> give the ball to Timmy Klaska the first play? Come on. They did not, and they went 72 yards. So this is a running offense for Nagani. And so this is not an offense that's really designed to come from behind. If they get behind, they're, they're still going to run the ball. Yeah, they're based on, on running the football. They're ground and pound. They got a good offensive line, an experienced offensive line that we'll talk about later. They got two backs who both have ran over 1,200 yards. So he, Paul Jacobson wants to dominate the line of scrimmage and establish the run first. So right off the bat. Let's see how the Gawney responds after a stunning open to the game. 72 yard touchdown pass Carson Beekman who just kicked the extra point will kick off for Grand Rapids West Catholic. Good deep kick all the way down to the two. Phil Nelson on the return. Broke one tackle but he's going to be hauled down at the 15 yard line. Terrific coverage by Grand Rapids West Catholic. Just 12 yards on the return. All right, let's take a look at this Nagani offense. Ty Jacobson is just a sophomore. He is the nephew of the head coach, Paul Jacobson. So he's obviously a youngster, but the, the biggest part for him that Paul Jacobson talked about, John, he, he manages the offense, gets the ball where it needs to be, but he can rely on that senior-led offensive line. Right, and that has allowed him to grow in this offense and become a leader of that offense with the experienced guys up front. 
High formation in the backfield. On the carry is Kyla Carr, and he bangs his way across the 20-yard line. That's six on first down. Let's take a look at the offensive line for Nagani. It's kind of a big deal. Look at that offensive line. It's senior-led. Four seniors. Nate Keogh is at the center spot. But to have an offensive line, this, this group has played together for two solid seasons. We'll talk about that in a minute, John, but how important that has been for what Nagani wants to do offensively. Get straight up the middle. That's Luca Reinen, and there is no room there. Take a look at the West Catholic defense. Base 3 4 defense, a very aggressive style of play, as you touched on, John, in the open. Led by Charlie De Bruin, Ryer Snow, Nolan Reinhardt, of those names you see there, those are the ones who've been leading this defense. Again, very aggressive. They come after you. They have three of the leading sack leaders in the state on that defense. Give is to Luca Reinen, and it's very close to the first down. It is a first down. Ryder Snow comes in, one of the leading tacklers on this Grand Rapids West Catholic defense. Number eight, you'll be seeing that number and that hearing that name quite a bit throughout the day. He plays both ways for Grand Rapids West Catholic. Play comes in from the sideline. Paul Jacobson has not been asked has not asked his nephew, Ty Jacobson, to throw a whole lot, but he says he does have a good arm. But he, again, is still gets new to the role. He's just a sophomore. The car up the middle. That was a good cut, but mm, what a good finish defensively by Grand Rapids West Catholic. Elliot Zania comes in to plug the hole in a hurry along with Joe Debsky, who's the leading tackler on the team. Z Zania did a nice job fighting off a block, reading that. That was just an isolation play. Uh, old school, 70s football, you put a fullback in front of that tailback and let him iso the linebacker. And Zania did a nice job fighting off the block and making that tackle. The car, Luca Winan in the backfield. And whistle blows. Timeout, Nagani. Timeout by Nagani. So obviously didn't like what they saw right there. Facing a second and eight from their own 30 yard line. Paul Jacobson wants to talk things over with his team, 23rd year as the head coach for Nagani. John, talk about that offensive line, how important it is, because Paul Jacobson was saying it's really unusual, especially at the high school level, to have a group together two solid seasons. He said they really have a sixth sense of where each guy is going to be next to him. Well, the offensive line is probably one of the most difficult positions to play in football. And the longer you play, the more experience you get, the better you become. And to be able to be a cohesive unit to fire off the ball together, especially in this run-dominated offense that they run, is very, very important. It gives them a great advantage. And, you, and they use, as you can see, Eli Van Buren, their tight end. They'll line him up in the backfield. They'll line him up on the line. He can both block and, and a receiver. But he's really one of the keys to their motion when they want to use some misdirection. So. It's a real cohesive offensive line, and you can see with the kind of running attack they have, it's been very successful this year. Number eight is Van Buren. He's the guy in motion. The give is to Lacar. Nice hole left side across the 35. And come up a little more than a yard shy of the first down, but that was a good hole on the left side. Tom McCollum is the left tackle. Mitch Pulser is the left guard, and they open up a big hole for Lacar, and they've been doing that all year long. And they're not the biggest offensive line, Dan. They're just very sound and technique-oriented, and they do a good job. They love it when they can open up a hole, get five, six yards on first and second down, and then really start to drive off right. So third and short. Luca Reinen is the up man. Lacar is deep, and Luca Reinen, big hole, right side, first down. This is what Nagani wants to do. Gain of five across the 40-yard line, chew up some clock. They and move the ball. They love those eight, nine, ten-minute drives. Just 
uh, methodical, moving the ball, moving the chains, getting first downs. There's nothing that's more demoralizing to a high-powered offense than to sit on the other sideline and have to watch those guys just run up and down the field, just chewing up clock and yardage. Again, Joe Debsky in on the tackle. He had the most solo tackles on this West Catholic defense this year. Lone man in the backfield is Luca Reinen. He's going to get the quick toss left side. He's got a good some space, but man, the, the Grand Rapids West Catholic Falcons close that, led by Joe Debsky again. Danny Groskevich joining him. What looked like possibility for some big yardage ends up being a short gain, setting up second and seven. Great flow by that Grand Rapids West Catholic defense. They're very quick sideline to sideline. That time they tried the old toss sweep, and uh, it was great flow that, by Debsky coming up from his corner position to make that play. If Nagwani does throw, one of the top targets is Phil Nelson. He split out to the right side, and he's wide open. It makes a great catch at the 46. Phil Nelson, the top target for Ty Jacobson, open for a moment, and then he wasn't, but a perfect pass gets the first down. That time Nelson did a, ran a great route. You can see it. He came down, he turned to the inside, and then broke sharply to the outside to the open area. Jacobson hung in there and delivered the football. That is not easy when you know you're going to get sacked. He delivered a strike and took that hit and bounced right back up. And his uncle, head coach Paul Jacobson, says, we'll probably throw a little more next year. And you can see why. That It's a good arm. Keeper. And Ty Jacobson wrapped up. He had Kyla Carr out there, but I think he made the right choice not to pitch it. Ethan Stoner leading a host of tacklers for Grand Rapids West Catholic, a loss of three. They, they tried to run this option, as you can see, coming down the line. They did not, they were not able to get, well, too much penetration, but what you're trying to do is get to the inside shoulder of that outside linebacker. He was never able to do it because of the penetration, and that's what really thwarted that option. The car of the deep man, Luca Reinen up close in the eye. Luke Reinen on the give, man, there was nothing there on the right side. Again, Elliot Zania leading the way. And it seems like every time one of the Nagani running backs is up the middle, there's four or five guys ready to greet him. They ran right into a blitz that time, Dan. The linebacker, Zania, they had blitz called, and it was a, a great call of defense there by uh, Grand Rapids West Catholic. Fourth tackle already for Zania. Lacar and Luca Ryan in the backfield. That's Luca Ryan offset eye to the right. Number 24 back to throw Jacobson. A little screen set up right side. Kai Lacar across the 45, but he's only going to get about six on third and long. De Bruyne, or De Bruyne, that's Charlie De Bruyne, with the stop for Grand Rapids West Catholic. So fourth down and eight. And Nagani does the right thing here, it would appear, trying to get West Catholic punt and get West Catholic deep. Joe Debsky is deep for the Falcons of Grand Rapids West Catholic. Along with Caleb Klinger. Bill Nelson to punt. Hand off on the return. Look out, there's a wide open left sideline. Across the 50 into Nagani territory. Joe Debsky again. Prolific on defense. Gets the handoff on the return. Little trickery. Here and we go. Grand little Rapids reverse. West Catholic already ahead. Has it deep in Nagani territory. Here's the road to Ford Field for both of these schools. It's a seven and a half hour bus ride for Nagani, a little shorter than that, a little over two hours for Grand Rapids West Catholic to get here for the Division Six Championship game. Grand Rapids, both of these 
towns. Of course, Grand Rapids has grown to almost 200,000. Founded in the mid 18th century, 19th century, the 1850s. And of course, Grand Rapids known Furniture City for good reason. They have long been home to some of the finest furniture manufacturers. And of course, of course, President Gerald Ford, our 38th president, both he and Betty Ford are resting in Grand Rapids. They are both buried there. Terrific spot in the state. A lot. So on the return, a blindside block has brought the ball back. Yep. Yeah. Tough break there. Great call. Uh, was set up nicely. Just uh, can't block in the back. On first down, ball just thrown away by Bernie Barnes deal. So we talked a little bit about Bernie Barnes deal in the open. He's a senior and it's interesting. He came over from Wyoming over on the west side of the state. So this is his first year in a new offense, John. And he, this is going to be his only year at West Catholic. He had a heck of a year as we've talked about. He's got a good arm. He's averaged better than 10 yards in attempt. He could run the ball as well, but he had to learn a whole new offense and learn a whole new team. <laughs> All of his teammates are new, and uh, I think his head coach, Landon Grove, really impressed with the job that he has done as the new guy coming in and the job he's done running the offense. Never easy to jump in like that, but when you have number 22, Timmy Klaska, to take a little heat off you till you get orientated, it makes it a little easier. Klaska on the carry, his first carry of the day, just the second play of the day for Grand Rapids West Catholic. Klaska is standing next to Varnsdale. He's number 22 in green. Four wideouts for Varnsdale. In motion is Carter Perry. He spreads the ball around. This toss will go left side. That's a good open field tackle by Gavin Jacobson, another nephew of the head coach, Paul Jacobson. The completion to Andrew McAlary for a gain of nine. So let's take a look at that offensive line. That was really one of the question marks for Landon Grove going into the season. They only had a couple of returning starters, but DeBrien and Krzyzewski on that offensive line are the leaders. Pitch on the option right side, and that's going to be a nice pickup on first down for Carter Perry. Running the option, Bernie Barnes deal, Phil Nelson on the re on the tackle. Take a look at the backs and receivers for Grand Rapids West Catholic. Again, Barnes deal will spread the ball around. Ryer Snow is one of his favorite targets with 24 receptions, and he averages over 20 yards a catch, but he'll spread the ball around. He's thrown to 10 different receivers this year. Klaska in the backfield, in the shotgun. Give us to Klaska, nice move inside, and he breaks into the open field. Across the 40, down to the 30-yard line. Timmy Klaska is showing that ability to break away once he finds the opening. Ryan Reno makes the touchdown-saving tackle after a gain of 39. Well, you can just see here, all it is, a simple dive. Klaska, Klaska made a nice cut, and then you can see his speed. The play before, they got him to the outside on an option. That time, they were attacking the inside. So they're kind of getting him on a string going inside and outside with Klaska. Give is to Klaska again, running left side. And it's going to be a little tougher go. The ball is loose. Was he down? We will see right now. No indication it was a turnover. No, now the indication is it's Nagani ball. Let's see. West Catholic wants a review. Eli Van Buren looks like he was the one who stripped the ball. Right now, it is Nagani ball inside their own 25. Let's see. Josh Mitchell looks like recovers this football. Ball's out before the knee's down. No question. Or at least it looks pretty clear there. Ball is out right there. Right there, before he goes down. Inches from being down, and then pounced on by Phil Nelson. 
Phil Nelson does just a little bit of everything. Special teams player of the year the last three years in the Upper Peninsula. The previous Plays play both ways. Review. Play is under review, but our look I thought was pretty clear that the ball came out before the knee was down, so we'll wait. These are the plays that you can review. Pretty straightforward. Scoring plays, potential scoring plays, and turnovers, potential turnovers. Got a good look here. Great shot. And that ball is out. I have been wrong before, but I'm going to go with fumble here. <laughs> Easton Palomaki was the one who really stripped that ball, did a nice job ripping it out. And uh, it's close, but from our angle, we'll see. The ruling you. on the field of a fumble has been confirmed. First down. Boy, John, I don't think you can overstate how big that turnover was. And it looked like Jed Anderson, that senior defensive lineman, was the one who came in and punched it out at the very end there. How big that stop is, a turnover is, because Grand Rapids West Catholic was moving the ball again. Yep. So Nagani had something going on their first drive before it stalled just beyond midfield. And they'll try to chew up some clock, keep the hand, the ball out of the hands of the Grand Rapids West Catholic Falcons and see if they can get on the board trailing seven nothing here in the first. Well, that's that, that looks like their best defense right now is that they can control this football and keep eating up clock and Having some long drives. Again, they're going to run that I formation. Learn from Herb Duramity at Central Michigan all those years ago. On the right side, Nuka Luka Ryan. You know, you and I were talking, John, about an offense in the Upper Peninsula. You have to think about what the conditions are when you play in the UP. They had a game moved indoors in October. <laughs> after two feet of snow, Paul Jacobson right. said, we're used to this. They played in a blizzard last week in the semifinals in Reed, against Reed City and Gaylord. They're used to playing in snow and terrible conditions, but it's why the ground game is what they do. <laughs> it's tailored to the, to the climate and the elements. Luke Irwin in left side. Man, this West Catholic defense really coming with four and five and filling every hole right now. Great flow here. Side to side, these guys got eight hats on the ball. Very quick to, when you're going sideline to sideline, these guys are extremely quick. They're versatile and they, they make plays. Elliot Zania has been leading the way, five tackles already today. You can see the numbers on the season. You get up over 60, 70 tackles. He's got 83. That, that, that jumps out at you. In the backfield is Luca Ryan. Quick toss, right side. Nelson across the 30. Keeps the legs going. He's going to come up about a yard shy of a first down. Maybe not even that, but just shy. Nolan Reinhardt along with Joe Debsky. Boy, Debsky's been all over the field so far for West Catholic. And er this becomes a big early decision for Paul Jacobson. Fourth, and we'll call it a yard from their own 33. Lacar, Luca Ryan in the backfield. Trying to get West Catholic to jump, almost did, and I think that's all they're gonna try to do here. That's it, and pretty good discipline. They gave it a good effort. They gave it a good <laughs> effort. Couldn't get West Catholic to jump, so Nagani calls timeout, and they will punt it away. Yep, they have. We have reached the end of the quarter. Zero's on the clock. There was a timeout called, so they must See if they'll put one second back on the clock or if we're going to head to the second quarter here. So far, it looks like they're going to run one more play here in the first quarter. Let's see. 
Nope, looks like they will be. Funding from the other end. So the quarter has come to an end. Nagani hanging in there. West Catholic is going to get the ball back, though, and their offense has already shown how explosive it can be. Passing, running, big turnover has helped Nagani. West Catholic will get the ball when we come back. Let's take a look at Nagani trailing 7 0 after one quarter. A town of just under 5,000. Central Upper Peninsula, founded in the mid 1800s after the discovery of iron ore near Teal Lake. Yes, there is a reason they are called the Miners. It is the home of the only full track luge, 1600 meters long, and also home of a ski jump training facility called Johnny Suicide Hill Ski Jump. That sounds a little scary, man. <laughs> A little scary for me. I'm afraid of heights. I've always wanted to try that. No, I have. That's the one thing. That's zero, zero interest. I like to ski, but that is just terrifying to me. <laughs> yeah. Suicide Hill ski jump. I'm sure we could get an invitation to go there sometime if we really wanted to. <clears throat> I think I need a fake cast so I can't go up there. Nagani's going to go for it on fourth down, and we they got it. Quarterback sneak by Ty Jacobson. So after trying to draw the offsides at the end of the quarter, they didn't have to call a timeout. The clock had actually run out. So at the start of the new quarter, instead of punting it away, they go for it, get the first down. That's a big, big first down conversion on fourth and one. High formation. It's always Luca Ryan, number 24, the up man. Kyla Carr is the deep man, and he gets the carry here. Little Little bit of room on the right side. Kyla Carr, you touched on a little bit, Johnny, in the open. He's a guy that didn't really get much playing time because there was a senior on this team, Easton Palamaki, who broke his wrist. He was really the one two combination with Nico Lukarainen and broke his wrist in week five. Easton Palamaki has continued to play, but he just hasn't gotten the carries. Those carries have gone to that young man right there, Kyla Carr, and he's one of the fastest players in the Upper Peninsula. They really tried to get him the ball in space. Right here, he runs into a wall. Wow. And may, gains maybe a couple. That was a heck of a job to get past the 40-yard line after getting hit for a gain of four. It looked like he might get stopped at the line. And Kyla Carr is really someone to watch. They really were just trying to let not a lot of coaching going on, trying to get him the ball in space so he get his confidence. Yeah. And he's had some great games leading to this one. He really has, and, and you know, you got that one-two uh, punch with Nico Luca Ryan, and once they start keying on Luca Ryan, and they're trying to get get it outside to Lacar. Third and four, pitches to Lacar, tries to get to the edge, and will not get to the first down marker. Oh, is that a good open field tackle by Caleb Klinger, senior? And he had the job of hauling down a guy who has breakaway speed and he stops him two yards shy. That's a long two on fourth down. Paul Jacobson though says let's go. I'm really been impressed with how aggressive these coaches have been on both sides. You know starting the game off the pass a reverse on the punt. These guys going for it on fourth and two twice. I like that aggression on both sides playing to win. Luke Ryan is a close man. That's Van Buren in motion. They're stacking the line and a flag flies from the back judge. The flag flew. It looks like timeout Nagani. Let's see. Timeout Nagani. Hmm. They're going to pick up that flag, and it'll be fourth and a long two for Nagani. Trailing by seven early in the second quarter. Nagani head coach Paul Jacobson talking to his team. You know, it's a pretty special thing when you're a team from the Upper Peninsula and you get to the state finals. I loved how Paul Jacobson described it. He said, yes, we have intense rivalries city to city, but when one team makes it to the state finals, this is what you get. You get support across the Upper Peninsula. 
And this was Nagani, the Miners coming back after their crazy 13-12 semifinal win over Reed City in a blizzard in Gaylord. That was the reception they got. You gotta love it. Fourth and two, okay. Kyla Carr keeps the legs going. Great job. What an effort. First down on fourth and two. Right behind that right side of the line. It was just the old school toss sweep. Braden Dunstan, Drake Spikerman, Van Buren. They just pushed him through and able to pick up that first down, that key first down. So they've gone for it twice on fourth down on this drive. This is exactly what they want to do. Chew some clock, move the ball, move the chains. Luca Reinen up the middle, nothing there. We saw Ty Jacobson complete a pass to, again, his favorite target, Phil Nelson. Be interesting to see if they want to get the ball back in the air. Do you think they have to, John, the way that this West Catholic defense is swarming the running game? Yeah, they're going to have to. They've had a hard time running outside. Every time they've tried to get outside, they've swarmed, and they, they go side to side so well, and they close so quickly. They've had more success going up the middle, so you got to fake up the middle, then get it to Van Buren or Phil Nelson, one of those receivers, Gavin Jacobson, to loosen them up a little bit. Jacobson to Lacar up the middle, a little bit of room, but man, did the Falcons of West Catholic close quickly. Timmy Klaska plays both ways. He's an outside linebacker as well as a fine running back. He made the tackle there after a gain of just two. Setting up third and seven right at midfield for Nagani. Team that averaged 38 points a game this year. Again, mostly on the ground is where their success has been. Jacobson, Lacar again up the middle, has a little bit of room. Gets it to again. Within two yards, Timmy Klaska brings him down. We're going to back that up a little bit. Let's call it fourth and three. And, well, let's see if Nagani can make it three for three on fourth down on the same drive. Well, Coach Jacobson said earlier this week, he said, coaches are going to do what they do best. And you can see that's what he wants to do. He'll run off tackle, toss sweep, trap a little bit. But he's going to run that football and do some play action. He's not going to deviate. Fourth and three. Quick toss. Lacar hitting the backfield. West Catholic has been terrific. A loss of two. Charlie De Bruyne, the junior linebacker, led the team with over 100 tackles this year, makes the hit in the backfield. And West Catholic gets to take over on downs right near midfield. Here's Charlie De Bruyne, number 39. He's just Right there on your screen, you watch him. Watch this penetration. He's coming right in there. Yeah, that's the way to stop a toss sweep. And they went to the strong. That right side of their line is really their strong side. That's a tremendous play there by, by Charlie, who's leading the, the UP in sacks. Barnes deal deep down the left sideline. Perfect throw. Almost. Terrific defense that time. I couldn't tell if that went in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. Looked like Charlie De Bruyne was the intended receiver. He gave him a chance to make a play. He put it up there, dropped it right in there. Just, I don't know if he nicked it, but it was. Uh, Ryan Reno, I think, got the hand in. Very close. Very, really, very close. Really nice defensive play, I think, by Ryan Reno. Getting the hand in. Three wide with Klaska in the backfield to give up the middle for a moment. It looked like some running room, and now the line is just going to continue to push as Klaska gains five, setting up third down. First play of the game was a 72-yard touchdown strike from Bernie Vars deal to Carter Perry. That's how this game started. Then West Catholic drove deep into Nagani territory before fumbling the ball away. Third and five here, leading by seven. Klaska in the backfield with Barnes deal. 
It's a chess game now with the defense. Stoner in motion. Deep down the right sideline in the ball. Oh, Moe's picked off. Kyla Carr, again, one of seven two way players, had a shot at a pick. Carter Perry was the intended receiver. That really. time they ran uh, Carter Perry on a flag route, but Lacar was not fooled. He really threw in the two, in two men there. That was great coverage there by Nagani. So like Nagani, Grand Rapids West Catholic will go for it on fourth down, fourth and five. Just beyond midfield. Play being called from the sideline. Barnes deal looks over and finally they will call time. Fourth and five when we come back. Big strike early. Falcons trying to add to their 7 0 lead midway through the second quarter. We showed you the reception for Nagani after their semifinal win up north. Well, here was the morning send-off. Pretty neat for Grand Rapids West Catholic. You know, big town, small town, John. With stuff like this, the, this is special for players. They get the they get the little escort out of town, the police escort. You got people lining the streets. Uh, it's something they'll never forget. Once in a lifetime. I mean, how many times do teams in, end up coming back to it and playing in a state championship game? And for them to experience this, have the lights being escorted out of town, that's... Uh, you never forget those experiences. As head coach Landon Grove said, this is what we worked for all season long. I believed we were going to be here. He's a really interesting story. As we said, a player, a quarterback at Ferris State five years ago for Tony Anise. He said, I was, I was pre-law when I went into Ferris State. I wanted to play football. I was pre-law. But he said, I, once I got exposed to Tony Anise, I was hooked changed it to education and he said I was like a puppy dog following him around for four years <laughs> into meetings that I shouldn't have been in picking his brain in his office and that was a huge influence on his career uh, and to be a head coach at 27 uh, Tony Anise as you mentioned earlier has a tremendous coaching tree in this state one of the all-time great coaches we've had here Koska big hole oh, keeps the legs going what a fine run 10 yards after the initial hit and he gains 15 and a first down. Well, he uses all that 220 pounds there. Very, very tough to bring down. Watch on contact. Two, three guys bounce off him. He drags him for another five yards. I mean, he is a load when he gets in the uh, secondary. Easton Palamaki was the one who brought him down. Pressure in the backfield. Barnes deal steps out of the way. Flips downfield and almost. Threw it away. Charlie De Bruyne, De Bruyne, the intended receiver. There's both a De Bruyne and a De Bruyne, so we'll try to get it right 95% of the time. <laughs> but De Bruyne is the center. That's Bruce De Bruyne. De Bruyne, Charlie De Bruyne is one of the linebackers and also out of the backfield. He was the intended target that time, setting up second and ten. Barsdale did a nice job just not getting a sack with the penetration. It shows you that his athleticism making a play to get out of trouble. Quick toss, right side, Carter Perry in the open field. He steps out of a tackle across the 25, down the sidelines, and he'll score! Terrific run from Carter Perry, his second touchdown of the day. Just a little play action screen. Perry does a nice job stepping back. This is all individual efforts. Watch those shallow cuts. He gets to the outside and then it's just a foot race. Makes one last cut to the end zone. Great athleticism by Carter Perry. Picking up his second touchdown of the day. Thought he had just about did step out on the near sideline and a great cut as you said. Low line drive that made it. I don't think it ever got more than 12 feet off the ground, but it carried the crossbar. Beekman with the extra point. Carson or Carter Perry has two catches today, 104 yards, and that was all. 
Carter Perry on touchdown number two. 14 0 Grand Rapids West Catholic. A look at Carter Perry getting a big hug from his offensive lineman, Luke Krasuski. Yesterday, there's a great tradition at West Catholic. Again, they've got a tradition of winning. Well, they also have a great tradition of inviting alumni back to join them for a practice little game. I'm pretty sure it's probably not a whole lot of contact. Uh, <laughs> I would hope not. They have helmets, though, Dan. They do have helmets. But look at that turnout of alumni joining the team to have some fun yesterday. It's, uh, it's a very strong program there at Grand Rapids West Catholic. They had five consecutive state championships from 2012 through 2013 through 2017. This is their first trip back under new head coach Landon Grove in his first year. At age 27, he has guided his team back, and it's been through the air. Well, coach Dan Roan for De La Salle uh, won a few of those over there at uh, Grand Rapids West Catholic to set that tradition. And congratulations to Coach and De La Salle for getting their second consecutive state championship here today. Beekman will kick off. Nelson and Kai Lacar are deep for Nagani. Two big touchdown tosses, 72 and 32 yards for Grand Rapids West Catholic. Good deep kick, Nelson will take it. Little room across the 15 and across the 25 out to the 30 for Nelson. Brought down by Joseph Petz. Coming up next, the Division Four State Championship game featuring Goodrich and Grand Rapids South Christian. Kickoff is scheduled for 7:30. You can find it live on the Valley Sports app and Stadium Sports Network. It will be re-aired later tonight on Valley Sports Detroit at 11:30. Dan, this drive is very important for Nagani. They have five minutes left. They got to try to get on the board and create some momentum going into the second half. That's the guy they really want to break free, and it just every time it looks like there's an opening for him, maybe to break one. John, Grand Rapids West Catholic closes it down, but you're still waiting for that one moment where he breaks it because if he gets into that secondary, he can be gone in a flash. Well, obviously, West Catholic and Darren Smith, the defensive coordinator, did a great job in film study preparing for this game. They're flowing very well. They're closing well. And, uh, they've been a, a really done a great job this afternoon defensing the Ghana. Van Buren, number eight, in motion. The look is to Nelson left side, but the ball was batted up into the air, blocked at the line. Nelson has the only catch of the day. Just a three-step drop, They're trying to run a little quick out. Get the big paw up there and knock it down. And who uh, else? Nice job, but Timmy, Timmy Kloska. Kloska. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, he's a special, special player. He's going to Air Force, but I love what his coach, Landon Grove, said. You know, he said that's that's great, and we're all happy for him. But he said his dream his whole life has been to play for West Catholic and to be in a state championship game. He said he's just been all in this year, and he's been really leading this team in so many ways, both well, we, sides of the ball. When your best player feels like that, it's infectious for the rest of the team. Ty Jacobson has called time. Nagani has called time. Like you said, a big, big possession. Down by 14, under five to go in the first half. Now a message from the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. This special presentation of the MHSAA football finals on Bally Sports Detroit is presented by the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. 14-0 Grand Rapids West Catholic. There are a couple of pretty amazing stories on this Grand Rapids West Catholic team in the one that we want to highlight right now is that young man, number 87, Halib Kuzmenko. You can't possibly even imagine his journey to wearing that number 87 for Grand Rapids West Catholic. It was in midsummer when he was in Kiev, in Ukraine, holding a rifle, sitting by his family's front door, 
ready to defend his family as Russian troops invaded. Incredibly, Grand Rapids West Catholic, and you can see him here wearing the flag of his home country at his first football game, which came literally weeks after he had been holding that rifle ready to defend his family. Head of West Catholic, Cynthia Knievel, read about Ukrainian refugees flooding into Poland, said, let's try to bring some of those kids here because there's an educational need for them. Four of those students flew to this country, host families had put them up, and Halib Kuzmenko decided he wanted to learn about America by joining the football team. He wanted to get to know some of his new classmates, and he has been on this team all year. The throw to Nelson across the 45, beautiful catch and throw, and a big, big first down for Nagani, but he has been a source of inspiration for his team, offering, as head coach Paul, or, uh, Landon Grove said, a healthy dose of perspective. When you go from that, and in a few weeks, now you're in America playing football. Unbelievable story. It's so great. And, uh, hats off to everybody at the administration at Grand Rapids West Catholic for doing that. That time, Ty Jacobson just threw a strike to Phil Nelson on a slant route. Great pitch and catch. Threw the ball low where no one could get it. He went down. Great play. Picked up good yardage. Lacar on the carry. A little bit of room. We've seen this a few times. Every time it looks like there's a little bit of room. And there was. Gap is closed quickly, led by Elliot Zanio, who's had a terrific game. But right now, the goal you would think for Nagani is to just run this clock and get on the board before halftime. Well, and I think, you know, as we said, Coach Jacobson said about Ty Jacobson, he can throw the football. He only threw it about 60 times all year, but the pass we've seen today, you can tell he has some real talent there. And they're probably going to have to use it more today to loosen up that Grand Rapids uh, West Catholic defense. Van Buren in motion, the car on the carry. It's been a pretty tough go, but you, as you said, John, it's been most most of the success has been up the middle. It's been it's been tougher running on the edges. Yeah, the the flow that West Catholic has has really shut them down. They're going to have to play action pass off of inside runs and try to get the ball open to some of those receivers and loosen them up on the outside, and then maybe they'll be able to run outside. But they got to loosen them up, I think, with the pass. Noah Abram, Josh Mitchell in on the tackle for Grand Rapids West Catholic. Luke Aronin is alone back in the backfield. They're going to try to reverse. Flea flicker. Jacobson throwing deep down the right sideline to Van Buren. He goes up and makes the catch inside the 20. A little bit of trickery. And Ty Jacobson found Eli Van Buren for the big game. Eli Van Buren, the senior tight end. Classic high point the ball. Watch this fake reverse. The flea flipper back to Jacobson. He puts the ball up in the air. And watch here how Van Buren high points the ball. He's six foot, gets up there, gets his body in between it, comes down with a huge catch for Nagani. He had to go get it because Jacobson was hit as he threw. Luca Reinen up the middle, spins out of one tackle and gets down close to the 10. Big gain on first down. Ethan Stoner on the stop for Grand Rapids. That, that's the second time that Ty Jacobson has stood in there and taken the hit and delivered the football. I can't be more impressed with that sophomore. How about the big fella, Eli Van Buren, going up and getting that ball. The car is the deep man, number 22. Luca Reinen, the up man in the I formation. Luca Reinen with the give. Sidesteps one tackle and gains about four. Setting up third and short. Big, big drive for Nagani. The old flea flicker turns out to be a huge play. 32 yard gain. Great call. Luca Ryan doing a great job inside there. Those are tough, tough yards inside the 20, and he's hammering inside off that right side of the line. He's done a great job all afternoon. You would think he gets the call here on third and one. No, it's Lacar, and he's going to be stopped shy. Nolan Reinhardt for Grand Rapids West Catholic was in the backfield just as Lacar got the ball. Man, I'll tell you, those secondary backs for West Catholic are so aggressive. They make so many plays. Uh, the sacks, they are a bunch. Once you get in that secondary, you're going to get tattooed because those guys are all coming up and hitting. Fourth tackle of the day for Nolan Reinhardt, the junior. Fourth and one. 
Jacobson quick toss Lacar inside the five has the first down first and goal with under a minute to go in the first half for Nagani when in doubt go to that right side the old favorite toss sweep that time Lacar had some people in front of him number 24 did a great job Nico leading him on the toss sweep and they were able to get a huge game uh, first and goal now inside the five yard line Timeout called. Nagani is right there, first and goal at the two. Now, Nagani does not have a timeout left. West Catholic just called their final timeout of the first half. So, John, if they get stopped short, they're going to have to make sure they get right up to the line. Well, coming up at the half, the Goodrich Martians are in their first ever state championship. We'll show you just how much it's meant to the school and community. We'll preview that upcoming Division IV state championship game between Goodrich and Grand Rapids South Christian. And John and I will break down the first half. Looking at some of the numbers in this half and the first half that we have seen from especially Carter Perry. Twice connecting Bernie Barnes deal connecting with Carter Perry for the two touchdowns. All of that coming up at halftime. Right now, this is this is the game for Nagani. They have to be able to punch it in here. Well, you got to get it for momentum. You got to get on the board. You got to. There's so many reasons that they have to get some points on the board here in this first half. Uh, they're not a, a big come from behind quick strike team. So this is so crucial right now, and they have no timeouts in 50 seconds. So they're going to have to be real smart with game and time management uh, coming down the stretch here. So far, a 10 play, 67 yard drive. Luca Ryan and Lacar in the backfield, Van Buren in motion. Ball dropped on the snap, on the exchange, and it's a loss. Back to the five, just outside the five. It's got to be a hurry up. I don't see a sense of urgency here. Clock is ticking. Jacobson over to talk to offensive coordinator real quick. It's just a simple drop of the snap. Clock is ticking down. 25 seconds to go. I would like to see a little more urgency. Hit in the backfield. No room for Luca Reinen. You got to you got to clock it. You got to clock Third and there, goal, buddy. and they do. Six seconds left in the half. Phil Nelson is a pretty solid kicker. Do you go three here or do you have to because you're down two touchdowns, have to go for the six? I, in my opinion, I would go for the six, okay? Uh, based on the way this game's going and, and the type of offense, I think you got to go. Fourth down at the six, and they are going for it. Look for a play action pass. Try to get Van Buren dragging across the middle. Jacobson under center. Back to throw. Will roll. Will flip. And caught for a touchdown. Phil Nelson hauls it in. And for the fourth time today, Nagani converts on fourth down, this time for a touchdown. Nelson ran a tremendous route. What he did on that route, he drove him inside, and then he broke it to the outside, and Ty Jacobson delivered the ball up perfectly, and he went up and high-pointed it for a huge score. Bill Nelson, as we said, does a little bit of everything, and we mean it offensively, defensively, and special teams. He is the kicker. He's very good on extra points, and this extra point is up, and it is good. What a final drive of the half for Nagani. 14 plays, 70-yard touchdown drive. We saw the Falcons strike quickly. This was a beauty. Drove it down inside and then he broke to the outside. Look at him go up for that football with two guys draped all over him. Huge catch for Phil Nelson. Look, at sell that post, break to the corner. Great route running by Phil Nelson. And Ty Jacobson put it in the one spot. 
He gave him a chance to make a play, Dan, and that's what he did. The one spot where Phil Nelson could make the catch. What a job by that sophomore. Well, we are joined now by the head coach of Grand Rapids West Catholic, Landon Grove. And, Coach, quite a first half. The way this game started was with a bang. Yeah. That 72-yard touchdown toss. This is Dan Dickerson along with John Wangler. Give us your thoughts on that first half. Um, you know, it started out well. Um, you know, I got, our guys are playing hard, but we, we got to get off the field on third and fourth down. Um, I think they've converted five or six fourth downs. I don't have the stats with me, but man, oh man, we got to get out the stinking field on fourth down again. Credit to them. They're physical, they're big, they're strong, which we knew that was the case. Um, so, you know, um, you know, it's one of those things where our kids has got to understand that, buckle down, and get a, get down and gritty when it's those fourth and shorts. Coach John Wangler, were you surprised at them to be able to throw the ball a little bit uh, based on what you've seen, you know, the whole season? Uh, nothing surprised me with them. They're undefeated, um, and they're in the state title, so I expect them to be good at everything, and they are. So um, we knew that coming in was going to be a dogfight, so we're not surprised by anything by them. Coach, thank you very much. Appreciate you guys. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Heck of a first half and a big, big drive for Nagani to get on the board right before halftime as time expired. Carter Perry, the big first half, two touchdown catches. And Nagani answering Phil Nelson, Mr. Everything, with a terrific catch and touchdown. It's a seven-point game. Grand Rapids West Catholic with the lead at halftime. Ford Field in downtown Detroit. Division six championship game, good first half. Grand Rapids West Catholic, the 14-0 lead, 14-7 at halftime. Well, they say it takes a village, and there is no truer statement for the Martians of Goodrich High School. This football team is on a historic run right now. Prior to this year, Goodrich had yet to capture a regional title, but a strong senior class and an energetic community has pushed the team all the way to this year's Division IV title game. They're looking forward to the opportunity later today to bring home the hardware. This game is bigger than us. It's not for me, it's not for all of them, it's not for the coaches, it's for the whole village. Hey. And we've made it this far, we're top two, and I'll tell you right now, we ain't two. We ain't two. You've been here. First time you've won a regional, semifinals, first time, you're in the finals. Why this year? Why this team? Well, we just happened to have this group of young men coming in, and they wanted a new era in Goodrich football and get back to what Goodrich football was all about. They bought into that. They're the grittiest kids that uh, I've ever coached, uh, and they just pound it year round. It's all credit to these young men. This team plays for each other more than any other team I've ever been a part of, for sure. I mean, every time I put my hand in the dirt, I know I can count on that guy standing right next to me, that he's going to give it everything he has, every single down. I mean, this team, I mean, every, we're all Trust. brothers. Trust, Trust, for sure. It's a brotherhood, for That's sure. Did you know this is a pretty special group growing up with them, you know, moving through the ranks from Pee Wee football, junior high, freshman, and so forth? Yeah, I mean, we've always been like a super tight-knit group and we've always been like brothers almost. So it's been since basically kindergarten, we've all just came up together and always played together. And it means everything, especially for these seniors to go off on a win. I mean, that's just always everyone's dream, what we've always wanted. I think that would be one of the best feelings that I've ever had before. Because I mean, everyone's just so supportive of us and just to get that state championship for football that we've never had before. We've never even been on this stage before, so. I think that'd be cool just to show everyone. I believe that we can win! I believe that we can win! I believe that we can win! Let's go Martians! Go Wolves! We are Martians! Go Wolves! This community has been on fire. Uh, I've never seen it like this, and uh, I'm so proud. I've always been proud to be their coach. And I'm so proud this year to see the, the outpouring of affection and enthusiasm. It's just been so contagious and our players have noticed. And uh, like, I, like I, I tell people as much as I can, you have a vital role in this whole process because these guys pay attention and they see what this is all about. 
and I'm so happy for them and what they're experiencing, what they're going through, and what they're yet to experience uh, this Friday night. It's just incredible. What would it mean to you to leave Ford Field as Division IV state champion? Uh, that would mean everything, uh, just to know that we are bringing this school their first ever football state championship. It would be such an incredible feeling knowing that I'm doing it with this group of guys that we've all been together playing since we were little kids. I mean, it would be, it would be magical, really. We walk this together. Give me a look one time. We are! Oh, that's great stuff. Will Goodrich bring home their first ever football state championship? Be sure to tune in. Valley Sports app tonight at 730. They face off against Grand Rapids South Christian. Should be a good one. We've got a good one here. We're at halftime. Grand Rapids West Catholic with a seven point lead. This young man, Carter Perry, had a big first half. Two touchdown receptions totaling over 100 yards. McGawney with the late touchdown as time ran out in the first half to make it a seven point game. John and I will take a look at some of the highlights when we come back. This special presentation of the MHSAA football finals on Valley Sports Detroit is brought to you by the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers think Ford first and by legacy football number one football development program in Michigan and by Glassman Automotive got it at Glassman Dan Dickerson John Wangler back at Ford Field what a great shot outside Ford Field halftime highlights brought to you by Wallside Windows what a way for this game to start John Wangler what a, what a great call to start the game Carter Perry doing a great job catching that pass during Barnes deal and then here we go, Carter Perry again, making two great cuts. Watch him stick his foot in the ground and go up the sideline. Another great play from Bernie Barnsdeal uh, to Carter Perry. Here it is, Phil Nelson catching high point in the ball from Ty Jacobson, bringing him back to get their first score here uh, on the first half to make it 14 to seven. Great route that time by Phil Nelson, great route. <laughs> you can hardly believe these first half numbers when you look at that very bottom number the time of possession it doesn't it doesn't even look real it does no justice yeah you, <laughs> you'd have lost that bet that was uh, a domination of time of possession by Nagani uh, there are four or five on first down which is which is great third down conversion has not been great uh, yards guys favor Grand Rapids West Catholic but it's overall been a pretty even game so uh, it should be a great second half. It was so key for those guys, uh, uh, the Garney, to come back and score, change the momentum. We're looking for a great second half, Dan. Second half kickoff coming up when we come back. Well, the high school football season comes to an end Sunday afternoon in Brighton, the fifth annual Legacy Senior All-Star Game, hosted once again at the beautiful Legacy Sports Center Complex the event will feature 80 of the best graduating seniors from across the state. They'll get the chance to strap on their helmets for the final time, showcase their skills for a statewide audience. Our coverage begins at noon on Valley Sports Detroit and the Valley Sports app. That's Paul Jacobson, the head coach of Nagani, and he had this to say to his team. Looking ahead to the final 24 minutes of the 2022 season. The drive here. Let's do the drive, cash it in. All right, we'll tie this ball game up. Let's get, let's freaking head for the head for the finals. Okay, well, let's get after this gentlemen. Battle, play determined. Play determined, play hard. Okay, play hard. Every play, play determined. All right, you're 111. Let's get after it. Let's go. The minor way. The minor way. Here we go. Family on three. One, two, three! Let's go win a championship, gentlemen. Let's go win this game. Let's go. And Nagani will get the ball to start the second half. I still can't get over that time of possession in the first half. Uh, John, I, you would have to say that's about the 
perfect first half in terms of what they wanted to do possessing the ball for Nagorno. Absolutely, Dan. If they could have cashed in another time or two, it had been a perfect first half for them against West Catholic. But the fact that they scored there on that last drive was so crucial. And this is going to be a great second half. Beekman to kick off. Nelson Lacard deep for Nagorno, trailing by seven. They scored on the final play of the first half. Nelson inside his own five. Across the 20, has room! He's in the open field, only the kicker to beat. Beekman, Stefan, and Nelson will take it the distance! How about it? Ninety-eight yard touchdown on the kickoff return to start the second half. <laughs> Nelson has to catch his breath for a moment. He's got to kick the extra point. Nothing more exciting than a kickoff return in football. What a way to start the second half by Phil Nelson. So all Phil Nelson has done the last four plays is catch a touchdown pass, kick an extra point, return a kick for a touchdown, and kick an extra point. <laughs> well, here's Nelson. Watch, nice job forming that wedge. He makes one cut, and then he goes right up the middle, makes one guy to beat, and he's a kicker. And there's no kicker. I don't think it's going to stop Phil Nelson. The UP Special Teams Player of the Year, I think the last two seasons. What a great, versatile athlete and showing why he's so special, getting them right back into this football game. Wow. First return for a touchdown this year. Been averaging 30 yards a return. He just hasn't had many opportunities because they rarely receive a kick since they hardly ever give up any points. Well, and if they do, I'm sure they're not kicking to him if they can help <laughs> it. Well, you heard Coach uh, Jacobson at halftime, play the minor way, play determined. Great way to start the second half. Incredible. Scoring on the last play of the first half. First play of the second half. And now Phil Nelson, because he does it all, will kick off to Nolan Reinhardt and Eugene Atkins. They are deep for Grand Rapids West Catholic, who has seen their 14-0 lead evaporate in the last two plays. High end over end kick will go down to the 10-yard line. Nolan Reinhardt across the 20 makes a nice cut to get an extra 10 yards. Still fighting. And makes it across the 35. And now a message from Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. For over 50 years, your family has trusted Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. Call Family Heating and Cooling now for all of your family's heating and cooling needs. Visit FamilyHeating.com today. Well, we've seen the explosiveness of this Grand Rapids West Catholic offense. They just haven't had the ball a whole lot. Best defense. He's running the football, keeping them off the field, and they're doing a nice job of it. Three possessions in the first half. One ended on a fumble, two ended in touchdowns. The jet sweep and well defended. Carter Perry gains maybe a couple, but Nagani was all over it. Ryan Reno, one of the terrific linebackers over there, stopping him. They actually mark him shy of the line, so a loss of one on first down. Klaska, remember, in the backfield with Bernie Barnes deal. It's number 22. He's the explosive running back. And he'll get the carry on the right side and pick up about five on second and 11. Drake Spickerman, he's really been terrific defensively for Nagani. 
in on the stop with Easton Palamaki. Easton Palamaki is really impressive. Number 20 for Nagani. Broke his wrist in week five. Really kind of lost his job as running back and has continued to play and play very well defensively. Third down. Big hole. Koska in the open field. Has speed. Makes a beautiful cut. And he's going to end up in the end zone. Timmy Klaska, 61 yard touchdown run. I was just going to say he'd been kind of quiet there for a while, and then all of a sudden, that's what happens with Timmy Klaska. Who cares about time of possession <laughs> when you have playmakers like Perry and Klaska? Well, once he breaks into the secondary, uh, he's 220 pounds. There's not a lot of defensive backs who want to come up and stick him. And, He's just a freight train when he gets ahead of steam going. Carson Beekman on for the extra point. It is up and it is good. And five for five for the two teams combined on extra points. Timmy Klaska, an unbelievable semifinal game with 330 yards. We mentioned it earlier, but that's worth repeating. But it just tells you the explosiveness of that young man right there as you said he's a load to bring down and he's got wheels watch this hole move. that they open up for him he makes that one shallow cut behind that one pulling right guard and then he makes it two more cuts here he is getting to the outside and then it's just a, a foot race to the end zone and he's not going to get caught after that uh, head of steam that last cut was a thing of beauty if he doesn't cut to the outside he gets brought down probably outside the 10 Seven carries for the, Timmy Klaska. Seven carries, 135 yards. He averaged again better than 20 yards a carry last weekend, and he's just about there in the state finals. Everyone talks about his size and his speed, but uh, you can see on that run, he has great field vision, Dan. He can see and sense those tacklers, and that's, that's how he's able to maneuver through the secondary. Very, very impressive running back. In Nelson and Kyla Carr deep. Carson Beekman kicking it off. And this time they're not going to kick it deep. A little pooch punt. And that will be fielded along the near sideline. And that was the correct way to go. Matthew Peters fielded it, but a very short return, and you keep the ball away from Nelson. The teams, players, coaches, they work hard all week getting ready for the game, and so do the officials. Local officials meetings across the state every week help the men and women calling the action to stay on top of their game. Let's give them the respect they deserve. And better yet, why not become one? Visit the MHSAA website for more information, because without officials, it's just practice. Jacobson yeah. give right side Lacar somehow gains five when it looked like he had nowhere to go. We have seen 21 points scored in the last minute and 15 <laughs> seconds of this game going back to the last play of the first half. Lacar's down. I think he's cramping up a little bit, Dan. And that's kind of what we were talking about. You and I were talking about that before the game. I said, I bet they're happy to move inside, talk about Nagani, because they've been playing in snow for five weeks. And you made the point that, well, sometimes that can actually be your advantage. You're used to those elements, and moving inside can be a little bit tricky. Well, and it's a lot hotter in here. It's inside. There's a lot of factors. Uh, you know, even if you're used to playing in, in maybe more temperate conditions, you know, down, uh, down south here, uh, it's, it's tough because guys cramp up in here. You got to stay hydrated. I'm sure the coaches have talked about the kids. You can see them having the water bottles now. You got to stay hydrated because uh, that's a big fear is cramping up here inside in this dome. Is that Kyle Lacar? I believe that's Kyle Lacar on the ground number 22. It is. As we mentioned, 20 years ago, Nagani came down south from the UP and won their only state title. They honored that state championship team with the 20th anniversary celebration in September. This is a look back at that win. 
20 years ago, an overtime win for Nagani to win the state championship. And they are trying to celebrate the 20th anniversary, the eight-point win over Hopkins in overtime in Division Six, back at the old Pontiac Silverdome. Now, 20 years later, in a different locale, they're trying to win a second state title. So, Dan, Nagani today has run the football 30 times, and they've thrown the ball eight times, including that spike, which is way more than they typically have been yeah. throwing the football. And I think they're going to have to continue to do that this afternoon. Easton Palamaki will get the carry, and boy, he's stuffed after a short gain. Again, Easton Palamaki, look at the cast on his right hand. He broke his wrist in week five and basically well lost his job carrying the ball you're not going to keep giving the ball to a guy with a, a broken wrist but to his credit didn't miss a game continued to play defensively this is where kai the car stepped in the car just left the field after the cramp and there's easton palamaki getting a chance to carry the ball in the championship game and had to see him in there rewarded for really incredible toughness and sticking with it and continuing to play after breaking his wrist. And being a big contributor on defense. Never missed a game. Whistle blows. Play clock run down. Yes. That's a big, big penalty. Well, it's a five-yard step off. Delay game. Offense. Repeat third down. Mm. Instead of third and a long three, third and eight now for Nagani. Trying to answer back. Each team with a touchdown in this half. Luka Reinen is the up man, number 24. Palamaki is the deep man, number 20. Under pressure, and boy, Ty Jacobson just flipped it in the air as he got hammered to the ground. Timmy. Klaska was the one right in his face. A lot of two-way players at divisions five, six, and, and smaller. And Timmy Klaska is a force on both sides of the ball. Phil Nelson now will punt it away for Nagani, trailing by seven. You got to get the ball out quick against these guys on West Catholic. Dan. They are coming hard. They can blitz. Charlie De Bruin, six tackles for a loss, one. Six tackles, one and a half for a loss. They are all over the field, so slow developing plays are tough to, to work against these guys. Great bounce on the punt for Phil Nelson. The punt ends up going with a roll 42 yards. Grand Rapids West Catholic. Can their offense be stopped? They'll get the ball on their own 32. When we come back, the potent punch, Klaska and Carter today for Grand Rapids. We said there are a couple of inspiring stories for Grand Rapids West Catholic this year. And the other one that we have yet to talk about is that young man right there. Jacob Radlinski was diagnosed with cancer in June, Hodgkin's lymphoma. He has been undergoing treatment all year and playing all season long. Doctors cleared him to play to be a holder for Grand Rapids West Catholic all season long, just before the season began. And the best part of this story, he got to ring the bell on Friday, indicating that he is cancer-free. Couldn't obviously play offensively or defensively, but pretty neat that he wanted to be a part of this so bad, Johnny, that he got to be the holder all year long and serve as, well, he's a great teammate, but also pretty inspiring teammate to have. That's what it's all about, isn't it? I mean. To have that experience and just want to be part of a team. That's the greatest thing about a sport, just being part of a team. Now, Grand Rapids West Catholic with a seven point lead. Barnes deal wants to go deep, has a man wide open. 
Andrew McGallery will take it the distance and another long touchdown this time 68 yards Barnes deal to McAllery. The senior wide out McGallery got behind the defense and he was wide open. And Barnesdale did a great job just putting that ball up there, letting him run underneath it. Wow. You talk about a quick strike offense. This has been something. Forget about time of possession. <laughs> Jacob Redlinski on the hold. Beekman for the extra points. Up, and it is good. Explosion. Explosive offenses, big plays. We've seen four touchdowns over the last three minutes and five seconds of this game. Here it is, coming out of a shotgun. You got you got McLaurie down here at the bottom. He's just coming off, fakes a slant, okay? Did a nice job selling the slant, then went right to the center of the field. Now, kind of a skinny post. Did a great job with that route. The ball was up in the air, ran by the whole secondary. Tremendous football play, great play by Andrew <coughs> McAuley and Bernie Barnesdale. Wow, 72 yard touchdown pass, 68 yard touchdown pass, 62 yard touchdown run, 98 yard kickoff return. We have seen some big, big plays and a game that was tied to start the second half after the kickoff return, it's back to a 14-point lead for Grand Rapids West Catholic. Well, this drive right here is, is so crucial, right? You, they cannot get into a track meet. They got to answer. Nagani has got to answer these guys and keep pace with them. The answer in the first half was a 14-play, 70-yard drive to make it a 14-7 game at halftime. The kickoff return tied it. Now two big plays. Both longer than 60 yards for Grand Rapids West Catholic back to a 14 point lead. Phil Nelson and Ian e. Engstrom deep, but it, again, it'll be a short little kick. Nelson, the ball's loose, and West Catholic may have recovered. Nope. Boy, that ball was loose. Nelson looked like he was coming up, and finally it was Matthew Peters who jumped on it after it was rolling around for a second. Great play by Peters there. Guy's standing around looking at it. He jumped on it, recovered, uh, averted a disaster there Ooh. for Nagani. So we did see the quarterback, Ty Jacobson, can put the ball in the air. He's got some targets. Nelson, Eli Van Buren, both with big catches in the first half. To give Kalamaki. Deep man, and he's going to gain a couple on first down. They've just not had much success at all. Caleb Klinger, Ryer Snow on the tackle, trying to run on the edges. Now they their uh, flow, uh, that defense there for West Catholic, especially those linebackers and those secondary, they are tremendously getting to the ball. They close quickly. Uh, they have got to fake inside and try to throw outside, really to loosen it up if they want to run the ball outside. Luke Ryan is the up man, and he's going to get the carry in. Met in the backfield, never went down, but geez, Charlie De Bruyne almost took the handoff from Ty Jacobson instead of Luke Ryan. De Bruyne has been a force to be reckoned with there on the defense for West Catholic. He is all over the field. Well, he came through un untouched there. He is, you've got to put a hat on Charlie De Bruyne and know where he is on every play. Third and long. Jacobson just heaves it up in the air. That's trouble and almost intercepted. Joe Debsky had nothing but green in front of him if he'd held on. Again, the pressure, Charlie De Bruyne in the backfield in the face of Ty Jacobson. Every time he's tried to throw the ball downfield, there's been somebody in his face. 
Cedra Bruin again coming through, hurrying that. Very lucky to get that pass off and very dangerous because easily could have been intercepted. Nelson to punt. The last thing that Nagani wanted was to give the ball back to West Catholic. Fair catch near midfield. Joe Debski on the fair catch, but this offense, which can score in a blink of an eye, gets the ball back, leading by 14 near midfield. And now a message from your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Returning AZ Plan lessees can order an F-150 today and lease it for $2.99 a month for 24 months. Only at your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Think Ford first. Well, even though there's still seven minutes to go in the third quarter, this becomes big, big possession for Nagani and their defense to stop this incredible West Catholic offense. Running up the middle, Kloska breaks out of a tackle into the open field inside the 20. Timmy Kloska, another big game. Man, when he gets past that line, he's gone. Ryan Reno finally hauls him down with a touchdown saving tackle. Watch his spin move as you see in the hole. Coming right out of that tackle. Keeps his leg. The key is he keeps his legs moving. And he's all 220 pounds of muscle, has good body lean, and rolls right out of that tackle for a huge gain in the first down. 40 yard gain for Timmy Klaska. Charlie De Bruyne in the backfield. On the carry, inside the 10, and knocked down just as he gets beyond the 10. Pickup of seven on first down. Phil Nelson brought him down. We talk about time of possession being so key. Well, look at the numbers today and how it's meant nothing for Grand Rapids West Catholic, averaging almost 20 yards a play. Little toss right side, wide open. Debski into the end zone. Touchdown as a flag flies. Make it Ethan Stoner on the catch. Let's see what the flag is. There are a couple down. An eligible man downfield. Number 72 on the offense. That's always the concern on a screen. Some of those linemen get a little excited. They want, they want to release and help out a little bit too quickly. And uh, that's what happened. They caught him on that well-designed play. Uh, just they slipped out a little, a little too quick. Right tackle Luke. Krzyzewski, senior leader on that terrific offensive line. Timmy Kloska in the backfield now with quarterback Bernie Barnes deal. Out of the shotgun as he has been all day. The give to Kloska and Matt in the backfield. For the first times today, smothered Brody Pusey in the backfield along with Eli Van Buren. Great penetration there on the right side. Easton Palamaki was in on it as well. Nice stop there. Much needed stop for Nagani. Third and long outside the 15. So for a moment, it looked like the West Catholic had taken a 21 point lead. Now third and long, leading by 14. Stoner in motion. Quick toss to the end zone, and he overthrew. That was Ethan Stoner from the left side. Jodebski make it 21 31. Looking very similar, but that was indeed Jodebski, the intended receiver. So now Carson Beekman, only a couple of field goals this year. You know, so for so many of these teams that reach the state finals, they just, their offenses are so prolific, there's not much need to ever kick a field goal. But this is a good kicker right here. 31 yard attempt for Carson Beekman. He's had a long of 42 this year. And he nails this one. Wow, that's a strong leg. 
plenty of room. What, why that was big too, Dan, it's a three score game now. So it puts even more pressure on those guys to score. There is the holder, Jacob Redlinski. Such a great story. Cancer free. And don't ever underestimate the job that the holder does for the success of the kicker, kicker Carson Beekman. 17 point lead for Grand Rapids West Catholic. Well, it's time for the Menards big money moment. Second half kickoff to Phil Nelson, who had scored a touchdown as time expired in the first half. And all he did was go 98 yards, almost untouched, to tie the game at 14. Grand Rapids West Catholic has come back with 17 unanswered points to take the 17 point lead. And ever since that return, he has, not, <laughs> he has not seen the ball. Bill Nelson has not been close to getting the ball kicked to him as West Catholic has kept the ball short. Nelson is deep and Kyla Carr, who had the cramping, is back in with Phil Nelson deep to receive this kick. But again, expect another short kick like that. Kyla Carr will come over and the ball gets by him. That's trouble and look out. The ball never went out of bounds. And finally, it does at the one. Oh, disaster for Nagani. The car went out of bounds, but the ball never did. And James Thompson finally tracked it down at the one. Well, that ball landed in a perfect spot, took a great bounce for West Catholic. The car tried to field it, should have fell on it, popped it up, and uh, whew, it couldn't have gone much worse uh, for Nagani. Boy, you're trying to get back in the game, and you now have to go 99 yards. I try to sneak it the way that West Catholic has been penetrating the backfield. You might want to just sneak it here to get, get it out of the shadow of your own goal line. Well, as crazy as this sounds, it's that's not really a, a terrible place to throw the ball because they're not really going to expect them to do it, and they'll probably be bad, you know, punched in a little bit so uh, that's not it's, it's just actually, one of those quick tosses yep quick toss well he threw that the slant previous play the first is under half. review time up so before they get to snap the ball the kickoff and the recovery are under review the car as we mentioned went out of bounds and came back in to try to grab it that's probably what they're reviewing. Did he step out of bounds? So he goes out, comes back in, and does he have possession? Nope, he's back in bounds when he has possession, or at least tried to get possession. And if not for James Thompson, West Catholic was about to jump on that and get another seven. So they're taking a look, and we're not quite sure what they are looking at. You can't go out of bounds and come back in bounds. The runner was out of bounds at the seven yard line when he touched the ball. I mean, Nagani's ball in the seven yard line, first down. Well, that's not a small thing. Six yards. Makes a huge difference. But this again, we get back to Nagani. They, they can throw the ball. This is not what they're comfortable doing, John. And if, and if they have to get, if they're forced into throwing the ball down after down, down by 17, it's, that's not going to be to their advantage. It's really to West Catholic's advantage. Yeah, and I, I don't, but I don't see any other way to get back in this game until they're going to have to open it up and loosen them up. They have not been able to run outside with the pursuit and flow of West Catholic's defense. 
They've had some success running in between the tackles, but not not enough. They they need to they they've scored on big plays, so they have to find a way to loosen up that that team and negate some of the quickness that they have. So down 17, Nagani takes over at their own seven, and Amari in the backfield with Luke Rowani. Luke Rowani on the right side, and he almost had a chance to break a big run. Kind of like Timmy Klaska's got the ability to break a run when he gets to the secondary. So it was a coach's challenge from Nagorni because they wanted those extra six yards, and that was a terrific job by Paul Jacobson. The rules are pretty detailed about a coach's challenge, as you saw there on the screen. Hope you had a chance to read all of that. <laughs> before this second down play, second short gain. But the coaches, they've tweaked the replay rule in recent years for high school football. So each coach is entitled to a challenge. You have to have a timeout to ask for the challenge. And then if you're successful, you retain that timeout. And he did the right thing. You have to call it before the next play. Those are all the things that you can review. And that was all about the boundary call. Ball's on the ground, fumbled, handoff to Luca Reinen. West Catholic says they have it. See if the officials agree. It's a fight for the ball at the bottom of that pile. And first down, West Catholic. Unsuccessful handoff. Ty Jacobs into Nico Lukarainen. Yeah, that's, as you can see, watch the ball. It was kind of high. Jacobson gave it to him kind of up on his shoulder pads. You've got to give it to him in his belly. Watch him lay it up on his shoulder pads. And that time, Nico couldn't even get his hands on it. And uh, that's why it bounced around and they lost the football. you got to lay it in his belly. you got to look it in. And sometimes, you know, as a sophomore, under the pressure here, you get a little excited, but they'll learn from that one. Barnes deal gives to who else? To McCrosco, wide open on the left side, cuts it back, touchdown, Grand Rapids West Catholic. Well, that, that time... Costco just took it behind that big old left side, the young left side, the young guns there, Gabe Powers and Dakota Moran, and rolled it, rumbled into the end zone. Third touchdown of the day, eight touchdowns for Timmy Kloska the last two weeks. Noth nothing fancy. Low line drive, but made it just over the crossbar. Well, we heard great things about that young man coming in and after a quiet start to this game. Great, great. Here you go, watch Charlie DeBru in there. Pull around and seal this right in here. Great job. Charlie mm -hmm. DeBruin is doing it on defense, doing it on offense. He got two guys out of he the way. He did. Two guys. You know, it's worth highlighting the left side of that line. Dakota it, Myron, Gabe Powers, two sophomores at the start of the year, Landon Grove, said the biggest question mark was the offensive line, and not just about the offensive line, but could they play, could not could they play, but could they play at a championship level? Yep. And he said they proved to us pretty early on that they could, and they've been getting better and better. Timmy Klask is good, but these guys have been opening big holes for him all year. Well, the strength of any team is your offensive line. That's where it all starts. And these guys have developed, and they have shown that they can play state championship caliber football. You've got a guy like Charlie DeBruin doing it on both sides of the ball. So impressive offensively, this team, uh, this West Catholic team. 14-14 after the 98-yard kickoff return by Phil Nelson to start this second half. 
That was just eight minutes ago on the clock. <laughs> 24 points later, West Catholic of Grand Rapids has the 24 point lead. Little pooch punt is caught just outside the 30, and a fine return by Matthew Peters gets it almost all the way out to midfield. Keep up with everything MHSAA on social media. You can look them up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok now, and YouTube for football fan finals, for football finals updates. Event announcements, video highlights, high school sports news from around the state. The best way to connect with the MHSAA every day. Kyla Carr, after working out the cramps, is back in the backfield, and he gets the carry on first down. Quick little hit on the left side, but brought down quickly. Who else? Charlie DeBruin, along with Nolan Reinhardt. You heard about this aggressive swarming defense, and boy, they absolutely are. Landing Grove, head coach for Grand Rapids West Catholic, said this. As he said, I asked about his defense, he said, it's an awesome defense. <laughs> They've given up some points this year, but you get a feeling that some of that is in the fourth quarter of blowouts. And he said, that's been our strength all year long. Another pass batted down at the line by Jacobson trying to get it. But Ryer Snow made sure he blocked it. All six foot four. Arms up. Ryer Snow. Locks the throw from Ty Jacobson, setting up third down. Watch Ryer Snow. This is just how you teach it. She sees the pass, gets up, knocks it down. You got to get his hands down. That time, uh, Nico, you got to get those big defensive ends hands down, and his quarterbacks have no shot on those quick passes. Give right side, Luca Reinen. Going to keep the legs churning and get to within three yards of the first down marker. and. Certainly would think Nagwani is going to go for it here. They've been going for it on fourth down all day long. Elliot Zane has had a terrific day defensively for Grand Rapids, and he's in on the tackle that time. Fourth down and three. Nagwani trying to drive this ball again for five on fourth down today. Long drive at the end of the first half. They need a little quicker drive now. They just have not been able to, for the most part, break any of these runs. For more than a few yards, fumbled in the backfield. Luke Ryan picks it up, but again, it's Charlie De Bruin in the backfield. Amazing how often and how quickly he gets back there. He is a heat-seeking missile. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> there he is. Watch him coming. Wow. I mean, he could have taken the handoff. Almost. Yeah, you, what a day he has had. You have got to account for him. He is one of those guys like a, a Lawrence Taylor, a game changer. Every play when you walk up to the line, you better find out where number 39, Charlie DeBruyne is. We certainly have gotten a feel for why he led the team in tackles this year with 109, 10 tackles today. And several in the Nagani backfield. Again, going deep, and again, a man wide open, caught and down inside the 10. Andrew McAlary again, wide open. The senior just running by the Nagani defense twice. McAlary on the catch. There is nothing special about that one other than Andrew McAlary just running a go route past the corner. Twelve receptions on the year and two big ones today. Kloska in the backfield. He'll get the carry following his blockers, keeps the legs going. And finally brought down at the three. Here it is this time, uh, Bernie just stepped back and put it out there. McLeary just ran underneath it. And Nice, nice pitch and catch. Laid out, concentrated, focused. Exactly what you want out of a receiver. Nice catch there by Andrew McElroy. Second and goal, carrying right side. Charlie DeBruyne. 
brought down after a short gain if at all looked like he was stopped for no gain. De Bruyne averaged eight yards a carry on his 40 carries this year out of the backfield for Grand Rapids West Catholic. Tosca gets all the headlines and deservedly so he was almost at 2200 yards coming into this game but got a couple of other guys in the backfield who have helped out as well. Tosca's in the backfield with Bernie Barnes deal. And Klaska gets it right up the middle, untouched into the end zone. Fourth touchdown run today for Timmy Klaska. That line is blowing holes wide open again and again for that young man. And that was that left side again. That young left side, they're going to be around for a while. Charlie Dubruin will be back next year. They have some players. What an explosive third quarter. After McGonney started the half with a 98 yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Trying to anticipate the snap. McGonney's going to be flagged for jumping off sides. Prior to the snap, encroachment, defense, we play the try. 31 points in the third quarter for Grand Rapids West Catholic. So move it a yard and a half closer for Carson Beekman. who has been money on these extra points and he was all year long. Thanks to the holes of Jacob Redlinski. Perfect again splits the uprights. There's Timmy Klaska coming off that left side watch him block down makes that shallow cut to the left walks into the end zone. Look at the left tackle. Dakota Myron that young man is 6'6 295 and he's a sophomore like you said that the, the left side is looking good for the next couple of years to come for Grand Rapids and Timmy Klask is almost averaging 20 yards a carry I mean and he didn't do a lot in the first quarter this has all really been the last couple quarters I think Air Force is going to enjoy having him in that offense oh my gosh he's a perfect fit he really is. I mean, the size, like you said on the one run, just kept the legs churning. Yeah. And and then when he gets in the open field, well, it's that, a burst. His athleticism when he spun out of a tackle and then broke that long run. I mean, he he is he is a great back. Very very impressive. Twelve carries, almost 200 yards, and three touchdowns for Timmy Klaska. He goes from the Falcons in high school to the Falcons. In college. Go from green and white to uh, royal blue and white. Now the deep kickoff, and that will sail over the head of uh, Timmy Nelson, or Phil Nelson, into the end zone, automatic touchback. Now the second half page of MSSAA.com gets you closer to the action with. Features on high school sports from around the state, weekly coaches associations rankings, coverage of state tournaments and finals. It's a great read with fresh content almost every single weekday during the school year. Make the MHSAA's second half your first stop for high school sports information. Thirty-one point lead for Grand Rapids West Catholic. Jacobson will pitch, but he was hit as he pitched the ball right, and Lacar is going to pick it up and prevent another turnover. It's incredible how West Catholic has been living in Nagani's backfield. Joe Debsky that time on the hit, forcing the bad toss. They Loss just of keep six. Coming. They keep coming, Dan. They're just very, very active. Uh, that whole back seven, uh, they are extremely quick and mobile. And their front four gets penetration. Luca Winan in the backfield. Nelson split out to the near side. He's going to get the quick toss. 
And nice gain across the 20, but just basically gained back the six they had lost. Nolan Reinhardt with the tackle in the open field. Joe Debsky out there helping out as well. So that'll set up third down, and we'll call it nine from the 21. Gawney's drive at the end of the first half was really a drive of perfection for them. 14 plays, 70 yards. They just have not been able to, in the second half, get anything going with any consistency because of this swarming, aggressive West Catholic defense. Toss right side and over the head of the intended receiver, Phil Nelson. Running a little slant cut on the right side, and that was above and behind him. But you do get a sense of the arm of Ty Jacobson and what the future might hold as Paul Jacobson, his uncle, said, we're probably going to throw the ball a little bit more as he becomes a more mature quarterback as a junior and senior. And you can see he has the arm talent. He's thrown a couple really nice balls that first half. You know, it's tough, too, when they're coming that hard. He's running these two-man routes. It's, it's, it's difficult. You have to get the ball out very, very quick against West Catholic because they're coming so, so fast. Debski is deep, and Debski will fair catch the ball inside the 50 in Nagani territory, and that is the end of the third quarter. It was a big third quarter. The four fingers up for the fourth quarter. The kickoff return started this third quarter with a bang, and then all West Catholic. Timmy Klaska and Gallery, it's been a 31 point third quarter. West Catholic in full control heading to the fourth. This special presentation of the MHSAA football finals on Valley Sports Detroit is brought to you by Figer Law. Nobody knows the law like they do. Figer Law. And by your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers, think Ford first. An incredible third quarter for Grand Rapids West Catholic. Nagani returns the opening kickoff of the second half, 98 yards for a touchdown to tie the game at 14 and 31 points for that team. Incredibly 14 plays from the line of scrimmage, 14 plays to score those 31 points. That is a quick strike, <laughs> prolific <laughs> offensive display. Give up the middle to Timmy Klaska. Gain of two on first down. In two weeks, Timmy Klaska has run for 500 now and 30 yards. 530 yards. That's Last it. week it was on 16 carries. This week, 13 carries, so 29 carries. 530 yards and eight touchdowns. <laughs> That's a season for a lot of good backs. <laughs> Give his right side McGallery, and he breaks out of a couple of tackles, tiptoes down the far sideline, and a big pickup on second down, all the way down to the 31 yard line. A gain of 14. Well, we're seeing the wheels on that young man. I really like the, the versatility of the offense of West Catholic. They have a lot of formations, they have motion, they get a lot of touches for different guys. They do a lot of, they spread, they, they have multiple sets. Uh, it's really a great, explosive, diversive offense. And McCloskey leads the way. He bangs heads as he crosses the 30. It's about five on first down. Jed Anderson brings him down. <laughs> Take a good look at that helmet for uh, Timmy Klaska. <laughs> you think he's been banging heads a little bit this year? <laughs> and I'll bet he said, I, don't repaint it for me. <laughs> Those are battle stripes. Those yeah. are battle stripes right there is right. Yeah, that used to be all white at the start of the season. Not anymore for that young man. 
One of the Nagani players is down, so we'll have a stoppage here trying to get the number. And we know it's 50 something, but I did not catch the number of the player who is down. Don't have the number. We're not going to uh, figure out who it is. We're not going to say the name until we can figure out exactly the number of the player who is down at the 25-yard line. It is a one of the members of the Nagani Miners team, and so we have a timeout here. Let's talk about this Nagani team, though, John, and coming from the UP and representing the UP and how special it is. We touched on it earlier, but it really is. The thought that, you know, I don't spend a lot of time in the UP. You know, it's so funny that it's this whole different state, it seems like, above the bridge, below the right. bridge. Right. But it's a very tight-knit community. As their head coach, Paul Jacobson, said, yeah, there's rivalries. We have rivalries with nearby towns. But once somebody makes it this far into the state championship, through the playoffs, through right. the districts, into the regionals, to the state finals, the whole community in the Upper Peninsula binds together. Which is great, right? You know, it's it's UP pride, and they all come together. Uh, they pull for one another. They compete, but and that's what sports is all about. And there's a lot of pride in the UP, as, as we all know. I mean, being from there. Now, the big question is, do they root for the Packers or the Lions up there, Dan? <laughs> I think it's pretty split, don't you? <laughs> yeah. We understand it is number 58, Drake Spickerman, who has been a big, big part of this Nagorni team this year. Two-way right. starter on both lines, the offensive and defensive lines. He's a senior captain. Drake Spickerman, number 58. It's right there, you can see. So he, it does look like he got stepped on in the pile somehow. Yeah, nothing it didn't look anything major, but then as he got up, he went back to the ground. So he takes the hit here, but he bounces off the hit and gets in on the tackle. Maybe it looked like someone fell on his leg in the back. I don't know. Yeah, and then he, you can tell he's in great pain. As he's about to get up, he kind of leans to his right and goes down on his back. Mm-hmm. And Coach Paul Jacobson is out there, but he really said some nice things about Drake Spickerman, as you said, one of the captains on this team, kind of the leader on a line. As you pointed out, John, it's not a big line, but boy, have they been have they been good for Nagorni these last two years. Five starters have played together a lot. It's a very tight knit group. It's four seniors. Tom McCollum, Nate Keogh, Drake Spickerman, Braden Dunstan, all seniors. And then the youngster is Mitch Pelser, the only non-senior on that line. It's a it's a tight-knit group. It really is. And, and offensive linemen are the best. You know, they, they bond together, the, the big uglies, whatever. You know, that's – and they've really made this team. And the fact that they've been able to run as well as they have is a real tribute to, to that offensive line. That's why they've been so successful this year. So sitting up. Just not sure what it was that caused him to go down. It he took the block. He actually got in on the tackle and then kind of just fell to his right as he tried to get up after the tackle. Looks like he is talking with the trainer and uh, hoping to be able to walk off the field with with some help his teammates looking on right nearby concerned I'll tell you the Grand Rapids West Catholic had a big third quarter 31 points to take this 31 point lead after Nagani started the second half with a bang this game started with a 72 yard touchdown pass from Bernie Varnes deal 
to Carter Perry for Grand Rapids West Catholic. That's how the game started. Then the second half started with a 98 yard kickoff return. Phil Nelson electrifying this crowd to tie the game. And then it's really been all Grand Rapids West Catholic since. So good to see Drake Spickerman stand. You could, looks like he cannot put much weight on that right leg. And he is going to need a lot of help to get off the field. Nice hand for him from the crowd on both sides here at Ford Field. It's great to see him be able to walk off uh, under his own power with a little help. And that's been a big, big part of this offensive line and this Nagani team. He also plays on the defensive side on the defensive line as well. So Grand Rapids West Catholic already leading by 31 has the ball at the 26 yard line for of Nagani. Timmy Koska has a hole big hit but he got the first down down to the 20 yard line. So impressed with. The size, 6'2", but 220, and the speed that goes with the size. Well, his athleticism, his vision, uh, he can cut. Uh, he's got all the tools of a, a great running back. You can picture him doing well at the next level. Well, like as you mentioned earlier, that offense is really kind of tailored to him, and he should be a big factor out there. Air Force is... Been a force running the ball for years. You can picture him thriving in that offense. Triple option. Pasca on the carry following his blockers. Nice job. Waited for the hole to open. Finally did to allow him to get about five yards. We'll call it six yard gain. Jed Anderson makes the stop for Nagani and now Grand Rapids West Catholic going no huddle and we're going to see some Substitutions here. Barnes deal actually coming off, and we're going to see some other guys get a shot. Ethan Drosky is listed as the backup quarterback, but doesn't look like he came off the sidelines. Elliot Zania, I believe. Direct snap goes to Klaska and up the middle into the end zone for touchdown number four. Direct snap, big hole untouched. And a fourth score today. The old Wildcat. Nine touchdowns the last two weeks for Timmy Klaska. Here it is. Direct snap to Klaska. They were lined up three deep on the right side. He just fouled those blockers, picked his way in. Three hundred and thirty yards last week. Two hundred and thirty yards this week for Timmy Klaska. Extra point is up and good. Beekman's had a day. As has his holder Jacob Bradlinski. Another touchdown. This game was 14 14, and now it is all Grand Rapids West Catholic, Timmy Klaska. Well, it's time now for tonight's player of the game, brought to you by the Southeast Michigan Ford Dealers. You know, there's an extensive debate during the break about who might get this player of the game award, but. Uh, we settled on this guy. <laughs> it, was, hey, it was very close. <laughs> I was really looking forward to watching him, not just because of the big numbers, John, but because of that power and speed combination. And it's been everything that his head coach, Landon Grove, talked about. Well, so, sometimes, Dan, those guys who have power and speed are straight ahead guys, right? Big guys. He can cut. He can make shallow cuts. He's got good vision. 
Uh, he sees the field. You know, he's a complete back. Our statistician Mike Prada made a good point. Honorable mention, and because we're reading this uh, player of the game, we can say honorable mention. But there's been a guy defensively for Grand Rapids West Catholic, Charlie De Bruyne, who's been terrific today. Ten tackles. Three and a half tackles for loss. Charlie De Bruyne has been all over the place today and living in the backfield for Nagani. Well, I think it should be like hockey. We have one star, two star, three stars. Because, you know, you got to for Carter Perry's got a couple touchdowns yep. now. So let's not forget about him. That'd be a good little thing to start. I know it's hockey's thing, but still, that's a, that's a, let's recognize a few guys. We might have to do that. Number 39 is Charlie De Bruyne, and he's been terrific on both sides of the ball. The kickoff will go to Nelson at his own 10 yard line waiting for a block across the 25 He's going to try to cut it to the outside but hauled down before he got to the 30 yard line. Gabe Schweiders in on the tackle for Grand Rapids Catholic Central. We knew they were good. They played an extremely tough schedule this year. They lost at one point to Fruitport and the. Uh, Landon Grove felt like that was kind of a, a, a key moment in the season for them. Not that he doubted that his players were committed to what they were trying to do, but after that game, he, so we all just kind of looked at each other and said, okay, it's a loss, but we're going to learn from it, and are we going to stay committed to what we've been doing all summer and all fall? Right. Sometimes they go either way on those losses, and they, they really rallied after that loss and, and really, I think, have made them the team that they are today. Played a tough schedule. They played very well. The team that's used to winning, they have won six state titles, but they had not been to the state championship, the title game since 2017. And they have come back playing some of their best football in years. And under first year head coach Landon Grove, I couldn't be more impressed on both sides of the ball how well this team has played. Well, they really have. And, uh, you know, this team wanted to create their own legacy, they wanted to create their own culture. Uh, and Landon Grove, uh, being a young coach, has done an unbelievable job getting to this point right now. Give is on the right side. Kyla Carr has not come back in except for a couple of plays. James Thompson in the backfield now, along with Nico Lukarainen. And down by 38. The clock will run, first of all, but. If you're Nagani, you're not going to just start throwing the ball now. I mean, it's uh, just try to maybe get one more score and feel good about how this game ends. Yeah, Nelson not, is to the near side. I was going to say, they're not going to start doing anything that they haven't done before. Give up the middle. Again, it's James Thompson. Just a couple of yards setting up third and short. Nothing can take away from the year that Nagwani has had. 13 and 0, a perfect 13 and 0. And you know what? You celebrate the 20th anniversary of your one state title by getting back to the state championship game. That's a good year. Well, you have a town of 4,500 kids or people, right? And, and to yeah. be able to do this and come down and be in the state championship playing against schools from much bigger population bases. And, that's that's really an accomplishment. It really is. Ooh. Again in the backfield. Somehow James Thompson avoided the tackle in the backfield and, and actually gained maybe a half a yard. <laughs> but it was Wyatt Fredrickson in the backfield. Did he actually get the first down? Oh, that was on downs. That's right. Yep. Grand Rapids West Catholic will get the ball back on downs at the 37-yard line. And we will see the backup quarterback now, Ethan Drosky, a senior. What a thrill for him. He gets to a chance to play in a state championship game. He'll hand it off on first down and again. <laughs> It's just it feels like it's 10 yards every time he touches the ball. Timmy Kloskin just following that line. Matthew Peters finally brings him down but moves the chains. 
And now he's coming out and the crowd below us from Grand Rapids West Catholic on their feet. Oh, you got to love that. Look at that embrace. Landon Grove, the head coach, first year. Knows how much that young man has meant. Not just the production, but the leader that he is on this team. Give up the middle across the 15 yard line inside the 10 touchdown. Dom in body. They'll make it. Elliot Zania terrific day defensively and Elliot Zania on the carry takes it in for the touchdown for Grand Rapids West Catholic. Beekman has been perfect on extra points today. And he remains perfect. What a good leg he has. Eight for eight on extra points today. Terrific run. Elliot Zania gets in on the fun. Breaks out of a couple of tackles and makes it look easy. All Grand Rapids West Catholic here in the second half, and it's been impressive. Landon Grove in his first year, as we mentioned, when he took over the program, he knew that he didn't want to change a whole lot because this was a school with a winning tradition. This was a school that won a state title in 2010 and then again in 2013, and they just didn't lose. 2013, 14, 15, 16, five consecutive years through 2017. Grand Rapids West Catholic won state titles, six in all from 2010 through 2017. And they hadn't been back since 2017. So it, you take over a program, you want to put your stamp on it, but he knew they developed a culture that he didn't really want to change. That's he right. said, I just wanted to add some swagger back into the program. I thought that was an interesting way of putting it. And he said, we just did it with our hard work and our commitment to, we're going to outwork and out prepare every opponent we play every week. Well, you know, the great thing is when you go to a school that has won before and they have tradition, you can win again. You just have to capture it and, and you know, package it 2020 version. And that's exactly what he did. He's been around great coaches, Tony Anise, Dan Rohn. He's learned from him. He's paid attention. And he's taken that and put his own twist on it. He's done an unbelievable job A first year coaching. They're going to win a state championship. Deep kick. Nelson inside his own five. And again into the open field across the 30. Another terrific return for Phil Nelson across the 35. The other coach that Landing Grove said really had an influence and impact on his career right out of college. His first job was down in Elkhart, Indiana at Elkhart Central. And he said there was a coach there who's now at East Grand Rapids, Josh Shattuck. He said it was terrific for him and still learns from him picks his brain all the time but two big influence Tony and niece kind of the, the older and then Josh Shattuck uh, now at East Grand Rapids has been very influential he said on his entire career and boy just good things ahead for a young man who's only 27 years old Owen Cardinal is now in a quarterback and he fumbles picks up the fumble but he's going to be hauled down in the backfield the ball came loose but the back judge says he is uh, down right at about the where they're going to mark him down at the 32. That's a loss of five. So just into the game. Owen Cardinal is a freshman and he's going to get a chance to at least say that he played in the state championship game. Ty Jacobson is just a sophomore and good things are ahead for him as well. Owen Cardinal, the freshman, not too many freshmen get a chance to take a snap in a state championship game, and he hands it off. The game back, most of what was lost on first down. Hank Tinknoll on the carry for a gain of six. 
setting up third and nine from their own 41 yard line. It's great when these coaches get all these players in. It uh, means a lot. It does. They'll remember for the rest of their life. Number 49 over there on the Garney, the tight end, David Carlson, is the great nephew of our own Rob Rubick. No way. Oh, yes, we just found that. Uh, Rob mentioned that, and I want to make sure that we get your na your nephew's name mentioned. Absolutely. I'm sure he'll be a much better tight end than you ever were, Rob. <laughs> Carey is on the left side on third and long. Again, that's Tinknell. Solidly built sophomore. So there is some talent coming back for Nagani. The big job for head coach Paul Jacobson next year will be rebuilding that offensive line. They're losing four seniors off the line. Well, you got Kyla Carr coming back. So you got a, you got a big play guy. You got a quarterback coming back who can throw the football. Yep. So you have some things to build off of. Keeper Cardinal will cross midfield before he's pushed out of bounds. And he was right there at that first down marker, and they are going to give him the first down. Nice job by the freshman. Marker right at the 50, but they did give him the first down. No, just to your point, John, anytime as a reserve. You've been, you've been there every day at 6 o'clock for those morning wait sessions. You've been working your rear end off all year long. You haven't gotten much playing time. To get into a game here, it doesn't matter what the score is, does mean a lot to any one of these players getting the chance right now. Well, it means a lot for their families, right? You know, they come and support the kids. They, you know, save the dinner till 7 or 8 o'clock at night. They wash the uniforms, all that <laughs> stuff. And to be able to get in, and that just shows the kind of coach that Paul Jacobson is, cares about his kids and family, and give these kids that experience. Well, the clock ticking down. Final 10 seconds. And that's going to be it. And Grand Rapids, West Catholic, has won the Division VI state championship game. Klaska leading the line in the handshake. You love the tradition of the handshake. You really do. I can't wait to see what that young man does at the next level, but more than anything, as you said earlier, he wanted as a kid growing up more than anything to play high school football for Grand Rapids West Catholic. And when your leader acts that way, the rest of the kids follow. And that's what this magical season for West Catholic. And I can't imagine and I've never heard of a better final two games than what Timmy Klaska did. 571 yards and nine touchdowns the last two weekends. And we again want to make sure that offensive line for Grand Rapids West Catholic gets the credit for all the work they did all season long. Well, stay with us tonight on Valley Sports Detroit. As our teams battle the state of Arizona. First up, the Red Wings host the Coyotes. Coverage from Little Caesars Arena beginning at 7.30 on Valley Sports Detroit. And then starting at 8.30, the Pistons take on the Phoenix Suns out west. You can find that game on Valley Sports Detroit Extra and as always, both streaming on the Valley Sports app. Seventh state championship for Grand Rapids West Catholic. Their first since 2017, and you can only imagine how that young man, and he is young, 27-year-old head coach Landon Grove feels down on the field. First year, and he takes his team to the state title game and wins it. One of the most impressive performances we have seen. Final score from our Division VI state championship game. Grand Rapids West Catholic 59, Nagani 14 for John Wangler. A pleasure to work with you again, John. Always good. Our Always. entire Valley Sports Detroit crew.
I'm Dan Dickerson. We thanks for thank you for joining us. Coming up next, the Division Four State Championship game featuring Goodrich and Grand Rapids South Christian kickoff at 7:30. It will be live on the Valley Sports app and Stadium Sports Network. Stay with us all weekend. Valley Sports Detroit is your home for the MHSAA football finals. Have a great rest of the evening, everyone.